Hey guys, welcome back. Wow, feels nice to get some fresh air. Boy, it's been a while since I came out on a ride. Precisely, it's been little over two months now. I mean, the longest time I've taken a break from a ride actually. Uh, due to a lot of situations, some avoidable, some un unavoidable, uh, whatever. I just couldn't come out on a ride at all. Man, I feel happy that I'm back out on a ride today. And I'm following up on another Kenneth Anderson's adventure. And I'm right near uh, Ayur again. So, uh, Ayur Forest Rest House is somewhere around that direction, about 2 kilometers from here. I've just crossed that. And uh, I'm taking the route which goes to uh, Manchi actually. Which, which I had, where I had been uh, some time back actually. I'll actually put a link up to that video uh, of my travel to that place. The story that I'm following up on is from Kenneth Anderson's book Tiger Roars, uh, written published in 1967. And the story that I'm following up is that of um, Sher Khan and Betta Mugilalam Maniter. So it's quite an interesting uh, story. So the way this story begins is uh, Kenneth mentions that, you know, a long time ago, I mean, for him, he wrote this book in 1967 and he says a long time ago, uh, maybe I think early 1900s or late 1800s, there was a British collector who had purchased a piece of uh, land on the northern slopes of uh, Guterian Peak. So Guterian Peak is uh, way back in, way in that direction. You can see the hill ranges behind me over there. So that's uh, just right below that the spider valley starts actually. Hopefully we can get a view of that once I go somewhere a little further. So on the northern slopes of this Guterian peak, this uh, uh, well-off British collector, he had 300 acres of forest land that he had purchased. Uh, wow. <laughs> and uh, he called it as Betta Mugilala Estate and he built a stone house on that in the form, in the shape of a castle actually, on the design of the castle and he called it as Jungli Castle, <laughs> aptly so, because it was in the middle of the forest. So he had cleared up the land there and he had, um, you know, uh, uh, cleared off the lantana and all which was just beginning to grow there and he had, uh, you know, made this beautiful lawns and all in front of, there was good grassland in front of the Jungli castle and he had uh, maintained it very well it seems at the time. You know in fact when I <clears throat> climbed uh, Guterian peak a few years ago I did see some stones foundation and all at the time but at the time I was not aware of this story and I couldn't relate to that so I'm not so sure if that was the Jungli castle or not. But uh, pretty soon I'm planning to climb Guteran Peak again. Uh, when I do that, I will definitely check it out if there is any ruins at all at the place. So after the time of this uh, British collector, uh, the property was purchased by an Anglo-Indian and um, he couldn't maintain it very well. And uh, after his time, definitely it fell into the ruins. Uh, there was nobody to maintain it. The lantern grew back. Uh, the, uh, up until then there were a lot of herbivores also which used to visit, uh, be in and around the castle because there was a lot of grass to eat and there were carnivores coming behind them as well but um, once uh, the bushes and all came up, the lantana came up uh, Kenneth has written that uh, the animals moved on mm, there was not much grass for them to eat there so uh, and once it fell into ruins the villagers, the local villagers uh, maybe from Ayur village uh, and uh, other nearby, nearby villages, they started plunking off the stones because they were good solid stones that they, he had used to build a castle. So they started picking them off and you know taking it back to their place uh, to build their own houses. So thereby you know largely the, that's how the jungly castle was reduced to uh, uh, nothing. And um, during that time when there was still a little bit of stones left, there was a uh, lad in the village of uh, Ayur, 
which I just crossed now. So his name was uh, apparently Gurappa or something, I think. So that person, he was a 25 year old. He actually thought he was getting married, uh, and uh, and in his caste, probably that was late actually getting married at the age of 25, and he didn't even have a house at the time. And like most people were doing, he also thought he'll go to Jangli Castle, pick up some stones there. Apparently there were some more stones left. So he wanted to pick up some stones, come back and uh, build a house for himself. Um, so that he can uh, bring his bride to the new house. So he, bo he borrowed a, a cart from the village headsman. He didn't have one himself. So he borrowed it and then took that cart to the Gutheran Peak. Uh, to Jangli Castle, he uh, pulled off some stones and he was returning back. Uh, and I think mostly he was returning back either in the Spider Valley right there or in this very route that I'm planning to take now, uh, which goes to Manchi. Either one of those routes, because Kenneth did not exactly mention which route he was getting uh, back his stones. So that must have been a village track, he was getting back that. It was almost evening, I think sun had just set or something like that. And during that time, uh, he was just walking behind his cart and apparently there was a tiger which was waiting, ambushing him, uh, you know, from the lantana bush from nearby a tree or something like that. He was ambushed by a tiger on that track and he was killed. So that was, up until then there were no known uh, human kills that had happened so there was no concerns for him when he was walking he was he didn't have uh, to be worried about anything but then unfortunately he was taken by the tiger and uh, that's how uh, the man eater of Betamugil Alam was born so coincidentally during the time Kenneth was camping at Shivanipalli his famous haunt and Shivanipalli is somewhere in that direction over there so, it, it's about 5 miles is what he has written, I think. So, it must be around 8 kilometers, I think, in that direction. So, so what, what exactly happened was, the next day, the next day Kenneth got news from one of the forest uh, staff that, um, you know, this kill had happened. And because he was anyway camped there, he immediately rushed from there and came to the village of Ayur. And uh, so he walked, I'm not sure exactly which route he took, uh, but yeah, he walked to this uh, village of Ayur and he was joined by the forest officials and the police department staff and all of them together, they went to the place where the kill had happened uh, to check out and uh, also get the remains of uh, the poor old chap Kurapa. So, okay, so I'm going to continue now further now. I'm actually trying to, uh, going to visit a village here of Thuluve Beta. The reason I thought of, of visiting Thuluve Beta is, it, I think this is exactly the route in which uh, that kill would have happened. And, or if not, it would be in the valley and I'll hopefully get a good view of the spider valley. And I just can't get enough of the spider valley anyway. It's such a beautiful place to see. So hopefully I can see that and uh, I'll head there and continue the rest of the story. Let's go. Okay, so the mud road starts from here. And this is apparently the route that goes through Kaveri Wildlife Sanctuary as well. Kaveri North Wildlife Sanctuary. This is a nursery here. So this is exactly the route I had taken to Go to the village of Manchi. <clears throat> this route gets very adventurous further on. But uh, I'm not going all the way to Manchi. I'm just going to the village of Thuluve Beta, which I've never visited before. 
So whenever I was visiting um, Kodaikarai, the route to which is road to which goes beyond that hill. From there, I would always see this village of Thuluve Beta. I would wonder, okay, what a beautiful village on the uh, cliff on the edge of the hill. So let's see how it feels when I visit this place now, Thuluve Beta. It gets hot, really hot, very quickly these days. Right from 8 o'clock in the morning, it actually starts getting hot. And now, uh, now the time is around 9.45. Where does this route go? Wow. Check out the leaves of this tree. Such a beautiful reddish tinge color. Not sure what's the name of this tree. Looks beautiful. Not sure where this route goes. Looks like it is going into the spider valley. But this is the route that goes to Tuluve Beta. So once Kenneth came here the next day morning, he along with the forest officials and uh, the police department staff, they walked up somewhere this way, either uh, like I said it should be this road uh, or down there in the valley. So they actually went up all the way to the place where um, uh, the person was killed and they eventually found his body. Uh, very close by the tiger had eaten half of him uh, under a tree not far from the place where um, it had attacked so they were e able to easily find that and um, then the police did the regular staff stuff that they do with collecting evidence and all and uh, after that They return back to Ayur. So this is the route that goes to Manchi. And I'm taking the left here which goes to Tuluve Beta. I think it's a climb from here all the way to the hill. Okay, so there was a old temple here and they seem to be renovating it here <laughs> and because it's Sunday I see a few vehicles a temple in the jungle they are renovating it as well <laughs> This being the fire season, I think forest department they are deliberately burning a few sections. I hope it's a deliberate fire and not uh, an accidental one. They do this so that um, you know when they do controlled burns, they can prevent the fire to spread uh, to larger regions. So these are typical desi cattle which you see a lot in this road as well as uh, going to Manchi I saw quite a few of them. Wow look at his horns. Wow, 
what they're gonna make way yeah they're nervous oh wow check out this entire hillside seems to be burnt till there the bigger trees and bamboo they have not burnt only the undergrowth the smaller shrub and all have been burnt i think the lantern and stuff hmm yeah, there seems to be some small stream coming through how are you running the i'm the yours sir are you ra ah illind ivaga tulve beta is dura ide tulve beta na ondu 4 km 4 km idya so allinda chana kaana kelge kaanat alva parking near parking ide howda chana tourist alla bartta irthara bartara ಓ ಸರಿ ಸರಿ ಏನು ಬೆಂಕಿ ಸುಮ್ಮನೆ ಹಂಗೆ ಹಾಕಿರೋದ ಓ ಅವ್ರೆ ಹಾಕಿ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಅವ್ರೆ ಹಾಕಿರೋದ ಹಾ ಸರಿ ಸರಿ ಸೊ ತಮ್ಮ ಹೆಸರು ತಂಗನಹಳ್ಳಿ ಅಂದ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ತಂಗನಹಳ್ಳಿನ ಓ ಅಯ್ಯೂರ್ ಅವ್ರ ನೀವು ಸೋಪ್ ಪೌಡ್ರ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀನಿ ಸೋಪ್ ಪೌಡ್ರ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀರಾ ಏನು ನೀವು ಇಲ್ಲೇ ಮಾಡ್ತೀರಾ ಸೋಪ್ ಪೌಡ್ರು ಕಂಪ್ನಿ ಇದೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ದು ಓ ಅವರು ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೈದು ರೂಪಾಯಿ ಅಂದರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತು ರೂಪಾಯಿ ಸರ್ ಕೊಡೋದು ಓ ಕ್ಯಾಟ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಡಿಟರ್ಜೆಂಟ್ ಎಲ್ಲೆಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾರ್ತೀರಾ ಇದ್ನ ಹಂಗಾರ ನಾವು ಗುಳ್ಳೆತ್ತಿ ಬೆಟ್ಟ ಮುಗ್ಲಾಲ ಈ ತ ಅಯ್ಯೂರ್ ಅವರ ಮಾರ್ತಾ ಸರ್ ಹೌದಾ ಸೋ ತಾವು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಅಯ್ಯೂರ್ ಕಡೆ ಅವರ ಅಯ್ಯೂರ್ ಕಡೆ ಅವರ ಹೌದಾ ಸರಿ ಸರಿ ದೇವಸ್ಥಾನ ಚಿಕ್ಕದಾಗಿದೆ ಮಾರಿಯಮ್ಮನ ದೇವಸ್ಥಾನ ಜೈ ಜಕಮ್ಮ ಮಾರಿಯಮ್ಮ ಅಂದ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಮನೆ ಮನೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ತಗೊಂಡು ಹೋಗಿ ಪೂಜೆ ಮಾಡೋದು ವರ್ಷಕ್ಕೊಂದು ಸರಿ ಹೌದಾ ನಾವು ಪೂಜೆ ಆದ ಮತ್ತೆ ನಾವು ಊಟ ಮಾಡೋದು ಓ ಹೌದಾ ದಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹಿ ಗೋಸ್ ಟು ವಿಲೇಜ್ ಟು ವಿಲೇಜ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ರಿಮೋಟ್ ವಿಲೇजेस ಟು ಸೆಲ್ ಸೋಪ್ ಪೌಡರ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೀಮ್ಸ್ and he seems to be well knowledgeable he asked me if i'm putting the videos on youtube <laughs> and he said he can do some ads for soap powder so if at all uh, he said i'm doing any ad for soap powder then he said he's reachable i can reach him seems tulive beta is visited by a uh, few visitors also regularly it's not like too cut off when i was riding to manchi I was like for kilometers on the end I was the only person driving uh that but maybe that was on a saturday so i'm not sure uh today i've come on a sunday so i think the more people come out on sundays but nevertheless here uh, there's a lot of bikes village bikes i'm seeing but in a good way uh, at least it's slightly comforting that you are not uh, alone uh, in this uh, interior roads here the tree yeah this is a short ride up actually okay so i think this is it tuluve beta i arrived at tuluve beta here If I climb up there, I should get a good view of the valley. So, let me continue on this road a little further ahead. And it's good to see it's a tarmac road once you reach Thulwe Beta. It's only up until here it's a dirt track. There you go, that's the spider valley there you can see. Wow. Fresh leaves coming out in the tree. Wow, check out that place, man. They have a hut there. Looks like a family is living there. <laughs> But look out the view from there. Amazing, amazing. ರೋಡ್ ಹೋಗತ್ತ ಮುಂದೆ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಫ್ಯಾಸಿನೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಸಿ ಸಚ್ ಸಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ವಿಲೇಜಸ್ ಲುಕ್ ಆಟ್ ದ ಹೌಸಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ವಾವ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಹ್ಮ್ 
and that's the spider valley there beautiful flowers the forest is actually quite dry at this time most of the trees are have dried out actually only some of them have uh, are getting new leaves lovely roads to go biking Uh, that's the place where it's all cultivated <laughs> this look seems to be the other end of the village that's it al dari idya dari idya le ashta na ille illo hogata ille let me see okay i had to change the gopro battery the battery just died and uh, he said there is a village temple nearby uh, so i'm trying to see where it is these villages they have sun direct dish tvs in each of their houses so yeah they are not sort of cut off maybe this is the off road Wow. Check out this old banyan tree man. I love seeing such old trees. Wow, it's massive. Check this out. I absolutely love the colors of those uh freshly sprouting trees. The leaves look so tender and so light green and just so beautiful. and this is the mother of all trees it looks like the tree from avatar wow man incredible and i believe there's so much energy in these trees How massive this is. Absolutely loved it. Just fantastic, fantastic tree. Wow. What a mighty tree this is. Lovely. So I just continue checking out this route that goes uh, mud road that goes a little further. If there's a temple there, I'll see that. Come back, and then uh, at the beginning of the village, there is a place wherein I can seems to I can see the uh, you know valley below. So I'll go sit there for a while and uh, continue from there. If only there was a way for us to communicate and interact with such old trees. I'm not sure what all stories they can share us. so i'm walking uh, to a place where i think i 
can get a good view of uh, the spider valley here. Uh, the route I was taking a little uh, back, that was that seemed to be a difficult route to take, so I just turned back and came here. So let's see if I can get a good view of the spider valley from here. <coughs> So, our Karna, Bijam, Taita, our Martira, Asutin, but Renta, Asu by Hakpudira. Check out the valley there. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> what a beautiful place, guys. Just fantastic. This spider valley is just unbelievable. The valley over here is untouched and it still is untouched. Fantastic. Even to this time, I hope it remains like this. I see a few parts of it burnt even there. That part. Uh, maybe that's again forest department staff uh, have done it deliberately either way uh, this is such a fantastic place uh, you can see the hill over there behind me that's where is the road which goes to Kodakarai so and at a distance over there I can see the tallest peak in this region from here and that is Guterain peak and that seems to be the peak over there Guterain peak is the peak over there that's the tallest peak in the region the road actually goes uh, on the ridge over there to when it goes to Kodaikarai it goes on that ridge all over there to the base of Kodaikarai there and then the Gutherrand peak the mighty Gutherrand peak there so that's where the British collector had his guest house the wind is picking up here actually I was thinking of flying my drone but not sure the wind is Probably picking up here, but what a view of the valley right there. 